Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Danilo Aquisto. Welcome to another inspirational Tuesday. I'm Bonnie Mbouli. Uh, lovely to have you on Afternoon Express today, live on SABC3. Indeed. I must say, you're looking absolutely incredible. So I'm not Thank much you. of a fashion guru, but this is looking amazing because your collar is looking really, really cool. Do you don't even know where this is from cute. yet? I, I don't know where it's from, but you can find out on Facebook. Indeed, on Facebook and the website <coughs> after the live show today. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Today's show is so cool, and I'm super excited. You guys can tell just by the big smile on my face. I've got one of my ex-colleagues from SABC2's Hectic Nine Nine joining us in the loft. Laurieann Nokia Yay. is here, and she's live because today we're focusing our attention on the youth. The youth are incredibly powerful, and they are starting amazing organizations. We had to find out more about an organization <coughs> that uh, Laurieann herself uh, founded, which should be absolutely exciting. Plus, we have some representatives from the University of the Western Cape's SRC. They're here to discuss a program about their future fund program, which they've created. <coughs> it's absolutely incredible. You don't want to miss it. Absolutely. We also take a look at an interesting new app that helps high school students with maths and science. <laughs> and it also rewards them with real prizes like airtime and shopping coupons. Oh, cool. And then uh, we chat to the CEO of Private Property, Simon Bray, about the benefits of loft living in our episode of Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Sure, it's going to be a jam-packed show. And here we're going Italian in the kitchen. I know, and we are going extremely tasty in the kitchen. Hello, South Africa. I'm Jeannie D. And today we are going to be teaching you, well, myself and gorgeous Kiara, are going to be teaching you how to make possibly one of my favorite desserts. But I have no clue at all how to make it. Firstly, what the dish is called, the correct pronunciation. Yes, is panna cotta. Panna cotta. Yes, with berry coulis. Amazing. I mean, it just sounds incredible already. Remember that you can cook with us. And today, because we're going to be baking, remember baking is incredibly scientific and you need the recipe because if you don't put in the right amount of ingredients, then it could be a little bit of a mess up. So visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za today, and there you will find all that you need to be able to bake with us today on this fine day. Now, our first guest has entertained and educated South Africa's youth on SABC 2's Hectic 99 since 2008. She's also the co-founder of an NPO called the Dream Factory Foundation, which aims to ignite, inspire, and motivate hope for the future in the hearts of young people through the creative arts. She also speaks more than five languages and has her own blog about hair and everything that she does. I mean, wow, her bubbly, bubbly personality certainly does shine through. Let's have a look. And Manfred from the wonderful Stone Jets band. Guys, I absolutely love the performance. Thank you. Andre, Aries, you are so special that we have another mic for you today. There you go. <laughs> Forever and ever. Can we all just scream? I love this lady so much, South Africa. Warm welcome to Laurieann Nokia, my friend. Hey, friend, how are you doing? I'm so good. It's such a cool reunion to have you in the loft Dude, with us Dude, I'm today. so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, anytime. Happy birthday for last Sunday. How was it? Not last Sunday. This Okay, it is last Sunday. This previous yeah. Sunday, I was party. It was amazing. It was, <laughs> it was good. I enjoyed good it. Laurie, I'm so excited to have you on the loft with us today because throughout my journey, um, growing as a young person, I think also growing in the media industry mm -hmm. as well, you've always been a person that's inspired me along the way because your attention and your focus has always been towards actually doing hard work to make sure the youth grow themselves mm -hmm. as opposed to the big loud noise of hey look I'm a media personality I'm mm -hmm. doing these fun things so I'm looking forward to talking about Dream Factory but I have to just really just spend some time diving into Hectic 99 okay you've had some incredible moments on that show and it's been wow. such a great experience you were discovered like Charlize Theron tell us oh my word you know what I was always into theatrical performances so even going to church it was mm. like a moment to be like oh god it's drama happening up in here <laughs> and I was very instrumental in doing different plays mm. and you know one evening at church while everyone was like <laughs> we were on stage just doing our thing and we we're acting and there was actually a script writer in the audience and afterwards it was so miraculous she just came up to me and she's like oh my gosh you look like you'd be a very good on-screen uh, television presenter can you come to this audition yeah. on this day I was only like in grade 11 and I was like oh my word I ran I was like mommy <laughs> we need to go for the audition but it was for another show yeah. and uh, sadly I didn't make it because it was one of those like you either finish my trick or, or you, you go this. for this um, mm. opportunity and obviously mom's like school first yes. But then the following year, when I completed matric and I was going to university, they remembered me and they called me and they're like, there's this exciting brand new youth show that's funky, it's off the wall, would you come and you know, audition mm. for it? And I came through and immediately I got involved and sure. it, it's been amazing ever since. Since 2008, until this day, you are the longest, you and Ayanda have been the longest running presenters on that yes. show from the get-go. It's been amazing. How has your career transformed and how do you think the youth have transformed with you over the, those years? It's been such a transformational 
experience. Even in this last two years, I've got an opportunity to also live studio produce. So working behind the scenes as well and actually uh, producing content and making mm. sure the youth of South Africa are happy. So it's been absolutely amazing. I've grown with the audience. Everywhere you go, people are like, Lorraine's if for Shazy. And you're like, <laughs> okay, guys, I have I'm a name. I'm still starting to break Lorraine. it. I'm still trying to break my idea of hating on It's been so great, though, because people are still yeah. associate me with the youth people. And, and same with you. And it's, and a good it's exciting. Thing. At yeah. the end of the day, because you're a positive role model, you're yeah. out there and you're teaching young people, you know what, guys? It's okay to dream. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the circumstance is. Um, it doesn't matter if there's a, a poverty situation at home. It doesn't matter if there's yeah. a bad circumstance that has happened to you. You can dream your wildest dreams and you can be anything that you want to be. This is why I love you. Talk us through some of your most memorable moments on Hectic 99 because we actually, I think, have a clip of all of those moments that you've had so far. Let's take a look. Stop. Mlungo on the beat, away in mass of children. I break it down low with my moves so flow. I'm Dan, the man, always with the plan. Just allow my footer like no one else can. Cool kids, trend setters, you know we got it all. Uh, we go get a song. T, 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 T. That is no one's memorable moment at all. I don't even know why that's being played Guys, on SBC3 right now. I want the whole of South Africa to know, Dan came up with his own lyrics for that whole section. <laughs> what are the lyrics? Uh, um, Dan the man, always with the plan. Shasela Mafuta no, like... No, cool kids, trend cool setters. Kids. <laughs> yes, he said Shasela Mafuta like no one else can. <laughs> wow, okay. Yo, we've had, we've Lungo had some... on the beat. <laughs> Who just starts like that? Dan, your rap career, your television career, friend. <laughs> <laughs> your, your music career, I'm not sure. This hey? is why I ended up on SABC. Three. Let's go check out your real highlights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm lying to you. I'll actually talk about them actually because I mean you've had some incredible moments yeah. and recently the most exciting part of your career has been traveling overseas. Yes, Ooh. I got an opportunity to go. My very first one was going to Florida uh -huh. and I got to go for this amazing movie called Dolphin Tale 2. It's a true story about this dolphin called Winter. Its tail had to be chopped off. It got a prosthetic Ooh. and some of the stars in the movie, you know, you're looking at Ashley Judd, you're looking at Morgan Freeman, you're looking at oh, so many amazing people. Mm. I have a very funny story to tell you about that. I don't know if you're going to have time. Please tell me. I'd love to know. Yeah. So I decided to go walking around Tampa Bay in Florida like an hour before my interview is scheduled with mm. Ashley Judd. Mm. So I don't know the transport system. I decided to take public transport, walking with my highest heels, just Tampa Bay, trying to be American, you know, out there <laughs> doing my thing. Guys, the bus came back and they're like, Ma'am, we ain't going to South Beach. We're going to North Beach. I'm like, my interview's in the next 10 minutes. I need to see Ashley Judd. How do I explain to Warner Bros? <laughs> How do I explain to the SABC that I went all the way to Florida and I didn't actually finish my inter interview? I didn't get to do my interview. My hair, I love hair. When I got to the actual interview, my hair for mm. Ashley Judd was like just... It was one of those like, hi, I'm sweaty. My hair's here, but I'm still here. I'm from Africa. But it was and a massive interview. career highlight anyway. And you really did blow people away with that yeah. experience. I think it's your chance for you to grow. And you, You've done that and you've expanded even beyond the borders of Hectic Nana and with yeah. your, own, your own projects. Talk to us about Dream Factory and the passion behind it. Wow, Dream Factory is very close to my heart. It's an organization, an MPO, uh, founded with one of my good friends called Lusanda Gwai. Mm. And we started in the year 2011 by just doing a road show at Langa High. And we decided that day, you know what, we're going to be traveling all around different schools in the Western Cape mm. in South Africa and just going with the message of dreaming and inspiring young people. Mm. I think we reached about 30,000 young people through different road shows that we we were doing. You won't even yeah. believe it, Dan. A lot sure. of people, a lot of young people in impoverished situations do not even know that they can dream. Mm. They're just trying to get through their day-to-day -day circumstances, their day-to-day -day situation. And when we went out there, we started preaching the message of dreaming and we're like, guys, you know, you've got to have a vision. You've got to have a dream. You've got to have, you know, something amazing that you're looking forward mm. to in your life. And then we initiated what we call the Be The Dream program, where we have lots of benefits. Currently, we've got four students on our bursary fund. We've got a bursary fund for secondary sure. school. We help them out with some groceries for you know their family and we put them through secondary school and um, recently we've entered into a bit of a collaboration with Google Africa where we've brought coding to 10 schools so seven in the Western Cape three in the Eastern Cape where we're teaching young people who probably don't even know how to open an yeah. email account how to design an app how to design a website mm. and this will stand them in good stead by the time that they go to university by the time they want to be a startup I mean Dan you know about mm. this when you're trying to be an entrepreneur you don't always have money to start your own website you don't always have money to get your app out there but this is essential skills that the whole world needs and these kids yeah. are getting it and exactly. we have opportunities for them to go on amazing job shadow experiences it's mm -hmm. been so amazing we've been so blessed and the project is just spreading and spreading we're getting more mm -hmm. funding we're making more noise about it and everybody's learning how to be a dreamer sure Lorian, I'm really really proud of you I'm so glad to have you in the loft with us today because you've inspired me and obviously you spend your day speaking to millions of South Africans and particularly young South Africans yeah. continue the good work with Dream Factory thank you sure.
sure. crying though. Maybe not yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll get a tear to drop down just now. I mean, Lorianne is really just an example of young people doing amazing things with their lives. I mean, she's taken everything by uh, her own two hands and really made something of herself. She didn't grow up with lots and lots of money, so it just proves that anybody can make it happen. Now, after the break, we chat to members of the UWC Student Representative Council about their future fund campaign. And in the kitchen, we're making a panna cotta with berry coolies. Yummy. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And if you've just joined us, I'm in the kitchen today about to make a delicious panna cotta with the lovely Chiara. Now, Chiara, what exactly is a panna cotta? So a panna cotta is an Italian dessert. Basically translated is panna, which is cream, and cotta yeah. is cooked. Okay. But it's more delicious than it sounds. Amazing. It's literally, and it's so easy to make, which is the best thing. Sure. Now, how, well, you've already put milk in, like, on the boil. Yeah, so it's milk and cream. Okay. So we started that off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a vanilla pot. And you can see I've split it down the middle. Yeah. And I take the back of my knife and I just get all the seeds. Yeah. That's all the good stuff. Get all of it. That's all good. <laughs> no, there's nothing that reminds me of my childhood more than the smell of boiled milk. It's, I mean, mm, I would drink it if it wasn't. Like, <laughs> it is about comforting. to become a panna cotta. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to put that in there. And we're going to put the whole one in because we want everything to infuse nicely. Yes, do it. Okay, so we just put but that obviously in. that's going to come out shortly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so once that's in, we're going to put our sugar. Yeah. So just put that in. And of course, all of the the exact de or, or the exact amounts of what we're putting in are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Because that's the thing with baking. With cooking, you can kind of just throw in randomly yeah, you whatever coin. you want. But with baking, it's got to be exact. I mean, I've tried to make or bake a, a chocolate cake once, and it ended up being like the worst. Worst coffee, hard, awful thing ever. It is, it is inedible. <laughs> it is like that. I think that if you don't follow the exact measurements, you're not going to come out with something exactly. that's perfect. Yeah, I've got too, flair, too much flair for baking. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're a born chef. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're just mixing it in so that the sugar dissolves. Sure. And now, this is the fun part. So these are gelatin leaves. Yeah, I saw that. You've got one in here already. Yeah, so we put them in there, just cold water. It feels so funny. I know, it's like a little sea yeah. urchin that's sitting there. Oh, I could play with this <laughs> all day. It's so addictive. This is great. Well, it's good that you're doing that because we need to scrunch all the water out of it anyway. Oh. How cute is I've that? I've broken it. That's Not a problem. Fine. Not a problem. Okay, what do I do with it now? Okay, you can put it in here. Just squeeze it. Like... Yes, go for it. Gee, this is so fun to play with. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to do I'm that. I'm so happy you and love then... it. You just put that in, yes. Oh, is that what's going to make the milk and the cream go, like, ice creamy almost? Yes, it's going to set everything, okay. basically. And I think the bit... I always tell people, put cold water, because yes. if you put hot water, it disappears. Oh, really? Yes. Kevin, First time I did that, I learned that very <laughs> quickly. <laughs> OK, so we're just going to melt that in. Basically, it just needs to dissolve. And you can see here, I've just got our vanilla. Everything's dissolved. Mm. I always use a whisk because I don't want little globbies of little things in it. Of course. So that's Nobody fine. likes a little glob. No. Mm. And now you can help me, you can strain this for me. Yes, please. With pleasure. So you can just put that onto this bowl. Okay. I'm just going to turn this off. And then. You're going to help me. Yes, I'm just going to pour this in it. here. Don't take any strain. <laughs> I know. I've spent too much time with vanilla. <laughs> yes, I see so. <laughs> for me, actually. So there's our vanilla pod you can see there. And the best thing is you can oh, see yes. all these beautiful black seeds inside. Mm. Yeah, and I think that for me is the best thing. How amazing? It's oh, not good. My best. Okay, what happens to this? Okay, so we're just going to move this here. And now all you're going to do is you're going to pour that into a glass. The reason why I use a drinking glass is because, you know, you always, when you're making stuff that's molded, it's always like a stress. You know, you have this dinner party, you've got to get it out the mold and put it on the plate. Yeah. So I'm like, keep it in the glass, keep it simple, easy. Okay, so do you want me to do that for you? Yes, please. So you just pour that in there, you can pour it up to like that mark. And then what happens now? Perfect. So now in we just put cling film over it. Yeah. Keep it in the fridge, minimum four hours, so our gelatine sets. Perfect. Overnight's always better, though. Okay. Remember, for the recipe and, of course, the ingredients, visit afternoonexpress.co.za. This is... I mean, could you drink it now? You definitely could. Oh, well, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie's on the couch with our next guest. Thank you.
Thank you. The Student Representative Council of the University of the Western Cape recently launched the Income Valet to our Future Fund campaign together with the One Rand Wednesdays campaign. This campaign aims to raise 15 million rand by August to assist academically deserving but financially struggling students. We're joined by representatives of the U UWC SRC, Unati Lucano and Zukiswa to learn more. Welcome to the loft, gentlemen. Thank Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome lady. <laughs> Lovely to have you with us today, guys. So this campaign is coming on the back of of recent um, flare-ups of, of fees must fall protests all over the country and most of our universities. What is the significance of the timing of this campaign in light of that? Thank you very much, Bonnie. As I would like to firstly bring you the brief context of the recent fees must fall in mm. the institution of mm -hmm. higher learning. Firstly, the fees must fall was informed by the fee increment, which was uh, basically frustrated the students of the vets. Uh, from then, fr from, from that particular instance, it was then announced that all the institutions of higher learning in South Africa should come to a shutdown and it basically be in solidarity with the VEDS uh, institution which yeah. were aiming to increase the fees by 10%. Obviously, those were not only the challenges of the mm -hmm. students in the institutions of higher learning. It mm -hmm. then packs up all the challenges of which it was the issue of the historical debt, it was the issue of funding of the students, that's when uh, the SRC, as we entered office, we started to think about something that is unique in our institution which will mm. respond to such issues. Mm. So basically, it was informed by the inadequacy <coughs> of the funding in the higher education at large. Yeah. So basically, that's, that's how we came about uh, yeah. forming the Ikan Valley 2 Fund in, 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 at, at this particular point. I mean, it's a very specific approach and it's very proactive. And it's the antithesis of what everyone has said about the students, that they just want stuff for free and they just want it handed to them. And how did you guys feel that you could create a sustainable process out of this? Well, understanding the background of the students that attend UWC, because if you understand that universities are actually different and we have like unique challenges. So understanding that this, we also as students that attended UWC, we saw like, a need that we should be raising funds. Yeah. So the purpose of this uh, fund is to actually assist students, as you have mentioned, mentioned, students that are academically deserving. So as by the end of uh, 5th of August, we were hoping that we will raise, raise like 15 million rands because wow. we understand the challenges such, such as uh, food subsidies and uh, study material. And then for students that are actually residing off campus, we're hoping that we would assist with traveling allowances. Yeah, that's incredible. So how do you guys, I mean, what's the criteria for deciding which student is deserving? If you do not have any funding and then you're deserving, so you basically qualify for yeah, yeah. funding. And how has the university responded to this and what have they done to help? It started off when the university has uh, contributed to two million towards the fund. And as SRC, we took a pledge of 350000 in order to kickstart the program. Wow. So what are the different sources of, of, of donations that are, that are coming in? And how can people in the public contribute? Uh, currently, it's a public site that we are actually aiming at, even yeah. uh, corporate companies, and even students themselves, because currently we are embarking on initiating a one Rand Wednesday, because we feel that the charity begins at home. So if a student generally contributes one rand every Wednesday, when we calculated that money, we saw that it could be uh, around two point something million if wow. we are pushing it up until wow. the August. Wow, uh, so the one rand Wednesday campaign is running alongside, alongside the income valet. Mm -hmm. And what are you, are you hoping future SRC, um, incoming SRC will take this on and carry this on? Is this something you're proposing and what channels are you putting in place to make sure that happens? Yeah, as, I, as SRC, we, we started this thing uh, under very uh, difficult challenges, yeah. especially within the funding uh, well, in relation to higher education. But our aim as uh, we are about to exit office in August, we want uh, when we have an SRC that is coming in to be able to make this program successful because if we sustain this program, it could help a lot of students who are really mm. in need of it mm. because it, it focuses on three areas. Uh, providing a, a food security to his students because we understand that some of our students they are not comfortable in disclosing their current issues that they are facing. Mm. Some of them they go to bed hungry. 
So as the SRC, we, we are focusing on e food providing food security, tuition, and their study materials. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing about your campaign today. And I pray that every other um, varsity can take a, a, a page out of your book. Hopefully. Thank you. All yeah. the best with that. Thank so you. after the break, we take a look at a new cell phone app that helps high school learners with science and maths using an innovative reward system. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the REACH Trust develops mobile solutions to track socioeconomic challenges in South Africa. Through a free mobile app they've created called Level Up, they are making big changes in the lives of high school learners. We are joined by the Chief Product Officer, Ben Carl Haverman. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you, Jeannie. It's great to be on the show. Now, what a fantastic idea. How exactly does this app work, though? Well, Jeannie, uh, Level Up is a mobile solution that is available to every high school learner in the country as a Mobi site and an Android app from the Google Play Store. And essentially, it offers high school learners three things. First of all, free access to information, grade 8 to grade 12 curriculum in science and maths at the moment. Wow. The th second thing is a lot of inspiration, uh, which we've packaged under life skills programs. Uh, and these help learners understand how to open a bank account how to get a driver's license, or how to choose between a bursary and a scholarship. Yeah. And then thirdly, uh, we've got a very innovative incentive program uh, where we reward learners for doing challenges uh, on the solution or on the app. Oh, that's great. How does the reward system work? Well, if we do something, we get rewarded for it. Okay. Similarly, we've replicated that idea into the education space and users get challenges that they have to do every day that it's aligned to where they need to be in the curriculum. Yeah. These are, for instance, maths or science challenges. And then they can earn points. These points are then um, converted into tokens and they can then spend it in the Level Up store okay. on airtime, data and shopping coupons. Oh, that is amazing. And like, is it done in a, in a kind of general knowledge kind of way con concerning that topic or is it a game system? No, it's not a, a, a game system as such. Um, it's quite difficult, actually. You know, if I, you know, sometimes look at the challenges, you know, trying to revisit grade 10 maths, it's quite challenging, you know, <laughs> at my age. So we, we it's, it's academic challenges that, yeah. um, you know, the intention of the challenges are to help you with your schoolwork at the end exactly. of the day, to better understand and then discover more academic content. Yeah. You ask a daily question every day. Is that question taken from the syllabus or is it more general knowledge, I suppose? Well, life moment, knowledge, yeah. life skills. <laughs> no, at the moment we do three a day, but we're planning to expand that dramatically, you know, as we gain momentum and steam. Uh, and that is taken, or th they are developed by a team of educational experts uh, yeah. who are publishers of educational content. Uh, so, yes, it links directly to where a learner needs to be in the, you know, the work they need to be doing in the classroom. Um, and it works both ways. So sometimes a grade 12 learner would have to revise something they've learned in grade 8, uh, or a grade 8 learner can now, you know, tackle something in grade 12. And these Brilliant. challenges are presented in a, a kind of a cont contextual format. So there's a story first. So let's use an example, for instance, Kaiser Chiefs uh, played Orlando Pirates last night. We'll, <laughs> there'll be an intro into the question that references the game and then takes you into the, the question that is linked to the curriculum somewhere within Level Up. Yeah. And then you can um, answer the question. Brilliant. Or read more. Now, it's obvious to me why this app was developed, but why did you personally feel that there was a need for it? Well, Jeannie, the REACH Trust believes we can make an enormous difference in education um, by use uh, through mobile uh, technology. At the moment, I mean, it's, it's no secret that especially high school education in South Africa is in a critical condition. Um, mm. And the biggest indicator or the, the most significant indicator is the exceptionally low um, matric pass rate. So there's a huge drop in uh, learners finishing grade 10 to those finishing matric. And we believe uh, by doing innovative work and helping those learners through mobile technology, we are hoping to you know, get more learners to pass and exactly. reach matric at the end of the day. And then that coupled with the fact that, you know, essentially everybody has access to a, a mobile <coughs> phone in South Africa. We're one of the countries with the highest mobile penetration rates in the world. So it makes sense to use mobile at the moment 
to test, to grow, to learn, to scale um, these kind of solutions. Exactly. But it makes so much sense to me because you said it also, you also teach other things other than what's in the curriculum. Yeah. Like, for, I can't believe how through life skills, like when I was at school, I weren't, I wasn't taught about, weren't taught. Oh, there you go. Sorry to my English teacher. But we weren't taught about things like, you know, tax or opening up a bank account, things that you absolutely need in your daily life. So how is that communicated as well in your app? Well, it's interesting, you know, so, I mean, just to, to echo what you're saying is, I mean, I often also experience this when we go and we, we talk to learners in Tembisa or Utungulo or Butterworth is that a lot of them are asking questions around things like, how do I become a photographer? They, a lot of them use Facebook or Instagram or what does it take for me to become a designer or something yeah. like that. So it, it is, there's a real practical need around skills Definitely. and we and we want to do it. So essentially... As I mentioned earlier, these are small little programs within the app. You know, it's like browsing through a category. It's called Cool Stuff. And there we've got five sections that vary from career to in real life. And then you can now choose your little program and there's a few steps and it's all very mobile friendly and you work through it. Yeah. I mean, we're not saying you are an expert if you finish it, but we hope that you have a basic understanding of you know, and that would spark some interest for you to, for instance, become a photographer or yeah. to get a bank account eventually. It's so, so vital. I mean, it's so important. So how do students access this? This obviously is something that it's not, that's not used in classrooms, no. but rather when they go home to kind of further their knowledge and further their education, no? Yes. It's a supplementary learning tool yeah. uh, and it's available as a Mobi site, so mylevelup.mobi. And to date, we have had 100,000 or more than 100,000 learners engaged with yeah. the product in just three months. And uh, we've got close to 20,000 registered learners using Brilliant. it at the moment. So that's quite big in the education space to, to reach that many learners in such a short period of time. Yeah. You know, we're essentially the biggest high school in the country. Oh, that is amazing. So you've obviously been well received. What's the feed be, a feedback been like from the students? I think users love it. Um, I don't think they love it. I mean, anybody can go to our, our Play Store account and we've got a four and a half out of a five star <laughs> ranking from wow. more than 160 reviews. Uh, they're asking for more, interestingly. They want commerce subjects because you know, we are a non-for-profit organisation, so we are wholly reliant on funding. And yeah. so we started with maths and science, specifically because there's a very big need in that area Definitely. or those areas. So now we're going into, we're looking at commas, different skills, languages, which is a little bit more complicated to tackle. Yeah. Um, so that is where we would go. And they are also looking for more interesting rewards. So at the moment, you know, we're testing different things. Is it a burger at a specific um, a fast food church, restaurant? Yeah. You know, in certain areas, you know, the children are hungry. Or some of them want a calculator, for instance, yeah. rather than just airtime. So, yes, that's an interesting field for us to explore further. Well done, and best of luck with the, with the Moby side further. I mean, it's such a fantastic idea. Thank, Thank you, you very much for chatting to us. Thanks. Now, just as much as the REACH Trust loves rewarding hardworking learners, we love rewarding our loyal viewers on Afternoon Express. Absolutely, that's 100% correct. Smeg is giving away a stunning retro stand mixer to the value of 7,499 Rand. And all you need to do is log on to www.privateproperty.co.za and enter. It's as easy as that. What is more is that when you enter this competition, your name will automatically be placed into the draw for the grand prize of the new home for season three of Winner Home. The competition closes on Monday, 6 June 2016. Only one entry is allowed per person and T's and C's apply and can be found on the website. Now, after the break on Afternoon Express, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And today we're chatting to our judge and CEO of private property, Simon Bray. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, live on SABC3. Yes, it's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, the show where three talented young design contestants turn three empty apartments into dream homes at the Polo Village at Val de Vie Estate in the Cape Winelands. And the best part is that you, the viewer, stand a chance of winning one of the completed apartments valued at over three million rand. This week, we're all about inspiring our design contestants and you, the viewer, and today we draw that inspiration from one of our very own Winner Home judges. Take a look.
With Winner Home now in full swing right here on Afternoon Express, we are transforming ourselves into experts in all things estate living, property, decor, and owning a home. Today in the loft, we have Simon Bray, CEO of Private Property, and we focus on estate living and PAL as a neighborhood. And because we're taking a look at spare rooms this week on Winner Home, we ask how this comes into play when buying a home. Simon, welcome back to our loft. Thanks, Danella. Good to be here. No, it's a very exciting time. Our designers are, I think, stressed out of their minds and are very excited about the whole move towards, you know, building these incredible, incredible homes. But some people might say that estate living is very intimidating. Some people might find it incredibly exciting. What is the purpose of, of, of estate living and does it, is it something that is of value? Yeah, I think estate living is certainly the new normal in South Africa's property mm. market. Uh, most of the people in the market for a home, particularly your families and your retirees, are looking at estates. We see them going nuts uh, on the private property website on a daily basis. The demand is certainly there from the market perspective. And I think it's obvious, you know, the value inside of an estate is, uh, is this idea of control, this idea of privacy, this mm. idea of safety and security. I think those are the core benefits for people. And, and when you're looking to purchase a home and you're looking for a safe sanctuary for your family, those are the things that people think of first. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Certainly. Estates are a, are a big part of the South African mm. property market. Well, thank goodness we were on top of the ball and managed to find a home at the beautiful Polo Estate of Valdivie, which is situated just kind of outside of Paul, and it's a beautiful space to be. What are some of the benefits of living in an area like Paul? I mean, you mentioned the Valdivie Estate. It's incredible. Uh, the amenities that they've got inside that estate Oof. are another draw card. Sure. Equestrian facilities and swimming pools and golf courses and... It really is a, a truly magical place mm. for somebody to, to live and, and, and perhaps spend their weekends. Mm. Uh, but Paul as a neighborhood is a, is a growing part of South Africa, you know, one of these old towns that's seeing a revival and seeing a change. Yeah. Um, culinary capital of South Africa, I was, True. I was lucky enough to ride a couple of stages in the Cape Epic recently and you go through that Winelands area and it's truly magnificent scenery, mm. Mm. Uh, the restaurants are incredible. The lifestyle opportunities out there amongst the mountains are, are something quite special. Yeah, you mentioned quite a lot about family, I saw, and all the different amenities that are around that. And mm. we're speaking, obviously, this week about that guest bedroom. Uh, property is getting really expensive, and people are really trying to think wisely about when to buy property and where to buy it. Um, how do we go about thinking about how many rooms to buy and whether that guest bedroom is actually an important thing to look into, especially if you're moving into an estate when family do want to come and visit you, when you've got such a beautiful surrounding, you exactly. want people to come and experience it with you? Yeah, I think that. That's exactly right. You know, this year people are going to want to come to your beautiful new apartment in Valdivia. It's going to be a destination for your friends and your family to come and visit you. Uh, so a guest bedroom, a spare bedroom is a really important part of this year's show. But uh, when it comes to adding value to a property, the bedroom counts as probably the biggest indicator of value. Yeah. If you've got two identical houses, they're both in the same area with the same floor size and one's a two bed and one's a three bed, the value of the three bed is certainly going to be more. So yeah. it's an important room to add into mm. any house. But in this case, it's going to have to be a multifunctional space. It's going to have to be a Swiss army knife of, uh, of rooms. <laughs> of you know? bedrooms. <laughs> yeah, part office, part playroom, yeah. part bedroom. You know, it's have to be a very interesting design mm. challenge. I'm sure there must be many reasons why people have a spare bedroom or why people live in an area like that because there's so much surrounding you. I mean, you're either there for work or you're there to move in with your family. You might yeah. even be there to retire. But let's talk more about the surrounds because you're really close to something like Stellenbosch University. Yeah. You're not too far away. You're around the corner from Cape Town itself. Mm. You've got beautiful outdoors that are available to you. Does all of that affect the price of the property? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think Paul is one of these emerging towns that's just outside of a centre that's getting more and more appeal for mm. people that want to prioritize living over work. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're still gonna be working nearby, perhaps you're commuting to Cape Town four of the, of the days of a week mm. uh, and living in Paul the rest of the time. And I think that's becoming more and more popular across yeah. uh, South Africans as... as uh, yeah, it's away, but not away yes, at the same yes, time. Yeah. Yes, and because that's the case, uh, I think that countryside living, that living out there in nature is becoming more and more valuable, and particularly when you can package it in such a beautiful estate yeah. like Val de Vie. And it's also so close to, like you said, something like Stellenbosch. I mean, it is, it, there's a huge uh, sort of work community that's also there too. So it's, it is away, but not away, yeah. and it's beautiful, and it's, it's home away from home in, in so many ways, but you can also make it a new, a new spot for yourself. 100%. I mean, you, you talk about Stellenbosch, you know, a lot of people will think of Cape Town and its proximity when they think of Paul. Yes. Yeah. But Stellenbosch has got 30-odd percent of the JSC-listed companies in South Africa. So you're talking about a big opportunity for people living in Stellenbosch, working in Stellenbosch, mm. to consider Paul as a neighborhood. Sure, such a beautiful spot. 
spot. I'd love to do that. So what are some of the benefits of maybe city living versus uh, like sort of out in nature living? They're self-evident. I mean, you just have to look at the beautiful scenery, the opportunities for your kids or for you as you, you know, get older in life to uh, enjoy what nature's mm. got to offer. I think South Africans love to get outside. Yes. Uh, and, and this is a special type of lifestyle opportunity. Yeah. And we're seeing that become more and more popular amongst South Africans and, and we see the demand for places like Velde V on the website mm. uh, getting higher and higher each year. The Western Cape is really lucky to have a lot of that sort of beauty in terms of nature. So it's exciting to see that that community is also starting to grow in the Paal area. So yep. thank you so much for all of your advice, Simon. It's always good to have you. No, good. I'm looking forward to the rest of the show. I can tell you we're as excited as you are. So now remember that on this season of Winner Home, you stand a chance of winning one of the three apartments completed by our design contestants on the beautiful Valdivia estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za for more information on how to enter. Now, talking of that beautiful Val de V, recently Danilo visited the estate when our friends over at SABC2 hosted a truly magical event. He even bumped into one of our guests for today, Lorian Nokia. Take a look. Val de V set the scene for a two of a kind experience by SABC2, where the channel celebrated new seasons of some of their most popular shows with various media partners. I love a good party, and so when I heard that our family at SABC2 were hosting an event at one of the most beautiful venues in the country, I had to pop in and see what the excitement was about. Bearing in mind that Val de V is about to become my new second home when it comes to Winter Home Season 3 launching on Afternoon Express. So I'm standing by with Sandile, who is in charge of all the PR for SABC, uh, for all of our TV channels. So what exactly is the plan of action for today? Today is really about just reconnecting with all faces and also just um, teasing what is about to come. Sandile, I have seen drums in one of the corners. Do I get to play drums today? Today you're going to have to play drums. Today is about um, teaching, learning, educating, informing and uh, entertaining. Well, I can't wait to enjoy the rest of that. I also see that there's cocktail making right down my alley. To give the SABC2 talent a chance to enjoy all the fun, Graham and Ewan from Expresso kindly stepped up to fulfill the MC duties. Guests had their pick of fun at one of the four activation stations, art jamming, cake decoration, cocktail making and drumming. Typical men, they don't stop and ask for directions. Do you guys know this is an SABC2 event? SABC2. What really, really is it? Are you serious? Oh, what are you doing man. here? What, what are we doing here? Um, I'm actually a little bit confused, man. No, we are part of one family. We love each other. And we're not just talking about the Expresso and the Afternoon Express family, but the SABC as a whole. So what is the sort of vibe like that's going on here? What are we here to do? Well, dude, we've got a cocktail station, we've got an art jamming station, we've got African drums going, and we are seeing creative expression like I've never seen before with wedding cakes. So we are forcing people to get out of their comfort zone and everyone has embraced it. It's been awesome. Our job has been very easy, actually. It's so good to see the S3 family representing, giving the S2 family a time to take a break. Let's see what we got here. Ashwin, I'm going to have to say to you that your painting looks 50-50. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of. It's, it's kind of. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get my inner Picasso out right now. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm really enjoying today and it's fantastic to see everyone getting together and, you know, just connect. So, yeah, awesome. On that note, I'm going to leave you alone. Bye. Bon Claire, I see you making something so beautiful here. It's a tree of life. It's a tree of growth, I see. Um, obviously, you've seen a lot of talent in the country. How do you feel now having to be the one trying to be creative? I mean, the last time I did this, I was, what, nine, <laughs> ten, you know, so this is really weird for me. But it's so awesome and it's, yeah, it's a challenge though, I won't lie, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little difficult. And by the way, I think you might have missed a bit of paint, I don't know whether... Did I miss a spot? <laughs> <laughs> but look, I'm in a room filled with the most incredible talent. I mean, I'm with you, hello. Oh. Would you buy my painting though? Uh, or if we go to ad break. You buy it, you buy it! <laughs> Living up to their tagline, You Belong, the spirit of the event was creating a sense of community and togetherness among the guests. What does this sort of event mean to you? Have you had lots of fun? I've had so much fun today. Yes, it's been an incredible honour to be part of this day, um, to be part of the SABC. My parcela is groot. No, it's a mooi, it's a mooi, mooi, mooi TV show and everyone's really enjoying it at the moment. What is your favourite thing about it? Yeah, ja, parcela is a wonderful chance for me to work as an op to op um, on television. 
uh, Hectic Nine Nine has really progressed and it's really taken our youth from a sort of space where they felt so un un unbelonging and, and a space where they just felt a little bit lost. And you guys give life every afternoon to young people. What is the S2 sort of platform and being at today meant for someone like you who's a growing entrepreneur? Oh my word, it has been so amazing. At the end of the day, I think we've just grown from that entertainment space into like, we want you to be dreamers. We want you to have high hopes and ambitions for yourselves, no matter what kind of circumstances you're coming from. And I mean, that's the story of the presenters ourselves. We out there trying to do our best. We out there trying to live our dreams and we're sending that message across. So it's beautiful to be here today to continue dreaming and seeing other people, other presenters. I can say that that was very inspiring, but I'm not too sure about your cake abilities. My friend, our cake is so inspirational. You do not understand. We are actually going to start another business after this, a catering business. We're actually going to get our cake on. So we're very excited because one of our awesome lucky viewers is going to get a winner home here at Val de V. Are you looking forward to having new neighbors? Yeah, um, I think whoever's going to win it is going to be very happy, very lucky. And uh, it really is a dream to be able to live here. We really want to know from you, if you were to set out ground rules, what are those ground rules about living on the Valdivia estate that they must know? Like if they, they're going to hosting a party, must they phone you? What, what are the ground rules? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think mainly to have a good time. Uh, we believe this is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And uh, we feel very, extremely blessed to be able to live here. And just to partake in everything, ride horses, play golf, be outside, climb mountains, ride your bike, swim in the lakes, and uh, yeah, just partake in all the fun. Well, Good Up FM is all about connecting Cape Town. And one of the most important things in the SABC is for everybody to feel like a family. So for us to be here while this is happening in Cape Town, it's crucial we had to be here. And I'm lucky that I get to be the guy who's here for Good Up FM. Great hospitality certainly created some big smiles and a wonderful feeling of belonging to something exciting. We're involved with something so incredible here. Now, every weekday, we follow our talented design contestants as they turn three empty properties at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. And the best part is that you can enter the grand prize competition on privateproperty.co.za for a chance to win a finished apartment valued at over 3 million rand. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, if you are planning a wedding or if any of your friends or family members are in the process, then listen up. Coming up this weekend from the 27th to the 29th of May at Monte Cassino in Johannesburg is a 2016 bridal fair featuring international TV presenter, author and wedding expert Randy Finoli. Now, this coming Thursday, the 26th of May, we are also going to be chatting to Randy on the show. So jot that down in your diary. And today we are giving away a double Double set of tickets. All you need to do is SMS the. All you need to do to enter, rather, is SMS the keyword "express" your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMSs cost one rand fifty each. T's and C's do apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, if you are getting married and you've got no ideas of what to serve as the dessert, well. You're in luck because we've just made one of the most amazing panna cottas. Well, we, we. Yes, we, we. Totally. And I mean, I think this is a great dessert to serve at a wedding, especially wedding on a budget. Nowadays, everybody's on a budget. So, okay, what do we do with this? You've already added our kuli. Yes, I'm just going to tell you how to make it. It's yes, very simple. Please. I use frozen berries because you mm. can get them all year round. Yeah. Moscovado sugar. Yeah. Dark and rich and tasty. I use a bit of triple sec just for a little orange kick and then some water. Boil amazing. it down. Blitz it up, and then I sieve it because I want it to be nice and smooth. Oh, stunning. Okay, well, let's take this to the rest of our guests in case they want some more let's sieve. do it. Lee. Hi, guys. How yeah. amazing so cool. is this? Panna cotta. But can I just say, that video of you rapping, Thank I haven't you. seen anything cooler since Vanilla Ice. No, I'm going to get... <laughs> since Vanilla Ice, I haven't seen anything it's cooler. It's a good laugh, but I promise you that took us more than like 10 takes, I think, as a whole, when we put that whole thing together. It was wow, ridiculous. Dude. But how much fun. You even oh, did a God. handstand. Right? I thought it was scarier <laughs> than the unfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I so make sure you then. join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express and get here early because mm. during the first 15 minutes of the show, we're joined by a top South African hip-hop artist for his second visit to the loft, Casper Nyovest. And for dinner, we're making a Another version of a tomato soup with the ultimate grilled cheese sandwich. And I've heard the grilled cheese sandwich is going to be a big yes, one. So I make sure that wait. you guys tune in tomorrow. Yummy.
Have you guys not even tasted the dessert yet? Go yeah, for it. Yeah, we're just waiting. <laughs> Until tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll see you then. Good night and happy eating. Ciao. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. oh my God. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another Feel Good Production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.